Chapter 2 A Language with No Voice Decoding the signal from Miranda would be the scientific achievement of a lifetime. The source of the signal transmission and the nature of the signal are still up for debate. The signals are subject to intense study and analysis. Scientists would continue to decode the message looking for patterns and speculate about the intent and capabilities until more is known. The radio astronomy team meets in the conference room with Azalea. The conference room doors swung shut. A man clad in a black suit rose to address the gathered assembly, his presence commanding silence. His peers, similarly attired, awaited his words with an air of solemn gravity. Good morning, he began, his voice steady and authoritative. Before we proceed, I must impress upon you the critical nature of our discussion. Everything shared here is classified as top secret. Disclosure is strictly limited to those present. I am unable to entertain questions, and my team, who will be among you in shifts, are similarly bound. Our directives come directly from the director, and our staff embedded within your teams will ensure compliance. With a deliberate gesture, he signaled to Director Azalea to take the floor, then seamlessly rejoined his seat. Azalea, with a nod of acknowledgement, addressed the radio astronomy team, her tone reflecting the gravity of their task. I appreciate your commitment as we navigate these unfolding revelations. She began, diving into the heart of their mission. The crux of our endeavor is to discern if we're witnessing a natural anomaly or evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. I'm inclined towards the latter, a prospect both thrilling and daunting. She outlined the critical tasks ahead with clear precision. Signal decoding. Our immediate focus is on deciphering these signals. It's imperative we establish a reliable methodology for interpreting the Morse code. I urge everyone to join decoding teams and commence work post haste. Data validation. Accuracy is non-negotiable. Double check every frequency, validate data with peers. The significance of our work leaves no room for error. Message analysis. Once we have trustworthy translations, analyze the content. Look for patterns or clues that might shed light on the signal's origins. Transmission source. Identify the exact location on Miranda from where these signals emanate. This will require collaboration with planetary scientists to enhance our understanding of the Moon's geography. Security measures. Given the breakthrough nature of our discovery, stringent security protocols are now in place. Access to information is restricted to those directly involved. The presence of the Department of Interior underscores the sensitivity of our work. Communication protocol. We're developing a response protocol mindful of the ethical implications should the signals prove to be of intelligent origin. Public communication. While we value transparency, we must tread carefully in public disclosures to avoid undue alarm or speculation. Concluding her address, Azalea promised to distribute printed copies of their directives, emphasizing the historic significance of their work. This moment is unparalleled in our careers. The eyes of the world are upon us, but I have full confidence in your professionalism and expertise. Let's proceed with the rigor and passion that has always defined us. She reassured them of the continuity of their work, hinting at potential redirections based on emerging needs. Let's reconvene here two hours before day's end for a briefing on our discoveries. Your dedication to this pursuit is invaluable. Together, we embark on this extraordinary journey to unveil the mysteries of Miranda, committed to the ideals of knowledge, truth, and responsible science. The figure clad in black swung open the conference room door, his presence and that of his team marking the gravity of the situation within. Meanwhile, Joan, fueled by determination, retreated to her sanctuary of screens and signals, her office. There, she delved into the heart of the new transmission, dissecting its wavelengths with practiced precision. It wasn't long before she unearthed a revelation. The message was cyclical, with a defined start and finish, a coded loop beckoning to be understood. Armed with her findings, she hastened back to the conference room, where Azalea and the enigmatic visitors remained ensconced in their clandestine discussions. Upon her arrival, the atmosphere tensed, a silent acknowledgement of the critical juncture they faced. 
The man in black, with a subtle command, ensured their privacy was sealed once more. Joan, with barely contained excitement, laid her discovery before them. The men in black lean in, a collective focus sharpening. Close those doors, will you? Coy stated came the soft but firm directive as Joan's adrenaline surged. Azalea's response was immediate. Her curiosity peaked as she commanded, Show me. Joan, her words tumbling out in a rush, unveiled the looped nature of the message, a breakthrough hinted by her analytical prowess. Azalea, seizing the moment, acknowledged the significance placing her hand over the documents Joan presented. Oh my gosh, we can test my theory now. Let's take this to my computer and see if we're right. She declared, motioning for Joan and the man in black to follow. In Azalea's office, the air was thick with anticipation. Azalea, with a meticulous touch, prepared her computer to decipher not just the structure, but the potential language of the extraterrestrial message. Okay, I've set it to analyze language probabilities too, so we can identify if there's a specific language they might be using. Let's make history, she announced, her voice steady with resolve. With a decisive stroke, Azalea initiated the program. The computer hummed to life, the room holding its breath as they stood on the precipice of the unknown. The enter key was pressed, and in that instant, they were met with an immediate response. Message content. English. Probability. 98%. Hello, inhabitants of the Senev. We have examined your signals and extend humble greetings in peace. We are the united intelligence of Miranda, a moon of Uranus. We seek knowledge and understanding as you do. Let us communicate and share the wonders of the universe. In the confines of Azalea's office, time seemed to stand still. A shared sense of disbelief mirrored in each pair of eyes. The silence was eventually broken by the man in black, his declaration slicing through the air. From this moment, you are all under my command. He extended a hand to Joan. Welcome to the team. Joan's confusion was profound, her voice tinged with uncertainty. What do you mean? What's happening? Azalea quickly stepped in, addressing the man now revealed as Koi. Let me explain, she said, noting Joan's bewildered expression. Koi? You know him? Joan's surprise was evident. Azalea offered a reassuring touch. There's much I haven't been able to share until now. The truth is, the men in black possess alien technology and have been part of clandestine governmental discussions. The signals we've been investigating represent their first live case of extraterrestrial communication. Azalea shared how Kui and his team had approached her as soon as the signals began their analysis suggesting an intelligent source. Another observatory speculated it might be Morse code. Your breakthrough in identifying the messages loop confirms we're on the cusp of something monumental. She explained to Joan. Overwhelmed, Joan sought more. What else should I know? Kwai interjected, offering reassurance. You'll be kept in the loop on all new developments. Thanks to your discovery, we're ready to move forward. Now. Our priority is to understand who is on the other end of this conversation. Joan, still processing the weight of the revelation, acquiesced with a quiet, Okay, let's get to work. How can I assist? Kui's nod and encouraging smile were all the affirmation she needed. We'll start by decoding this message and adapt our approach as necessary. In the shadowed confines of Azalea's office, Kui orchestrated a clandestine symphony of minds, delving into the cryptic message with a fervor that bordered on obsession. For two hours, the air was thick with anticipation. The team's collective intellect funneled into decoding the enigmatic words that could very well dictate the future of their world. As the clock struck the final minute, Kui rose, a silhouette of resolve against the dim light, capturing the room's attention with a gravitas that silenced even the most skeptical of hearts. With a voice that carried the weight of unspoken secrets, he began, Let us unravel the mysteries veiled within this communication. The message, a beacon in the vast darkness of the unknown, extended an olive branch of peace and goodwill. Mirroring the very gestures of diplomacy, humans would extend where the tables turned. This opening gambit, a masterstroke of cosmic etiquette, was but the prelude to an even more astonishing revelation. They proclaimed themselves as the United Intelligence, 
a term that hinted at a singularity of purpose and knowledge, evoking images of a collective consciousness far removed from human understanding. Yet Kui mused, could this also hint at a hive mind, a collective that operates as one? Their admission of observing humanity's cacophony of signals sent ripples of unease through the room. We are but whispers in a universe that listens. We reflected, pondering the depth of their surveillance. The unknown entities had been watching, silently cataloging. But to what end? Did they reside on the distant world of Miranda? Or were they merely passing voyagers, drawn to the earth by its noisy signals? Their proclaimed desire for knowledge and understanding was a mirror to humanity's own thirst for exploration, a common thread weaving through the fabric of both civilizations. Yet, the message's conclusion, an open invitation to dialogue and potential cooperation, left a maze of questions unanswered. We stand at the threshold of the unknown, with more questions than answers, Kui declared, his gaze sweeping across the room where heads nodded in solemn agreement. Without a moment's hesitation, Kui unveiled a plan of action, a testament to his reputation for decisive leadership. Distributing a stack of documents labeled Top Secret to Azalea, he instructed, Take one and pass them on. These words are not for the world beyond these walls. Over 300 copies, each a silent sentinel of the night's revelations, were a strategic ploy. Kui's gambit was to seed the truth amidst the shadows, a deliberate leak to the press designed to flush out a traitor and weave a web of trust and deceit in equal measure. The government's counter-offensive was set in motion, a chess game played on a board where every piece was shrouded in mystery and every move was a dance with the unknown. The team worked into the night. Beyond the confines of their immediate surroundings, the political landscape was shifting, stirred by revelations from independent researchers. These individuals claim to have located the origin of a mysterious signal, igniting a rapidly evolving narrative. A news reporter, addressing the camera with urgency, announced, Globally, a wave of fascination has been triggered by enigmatic radio signals. For weeks, astronomers and enthusiasts alike have been ensnared by these transmissions. The phenomena have not only gone viral, but have also sent ripples through the stock market, echoing the public's excitement. Personally, it feels like a revelation long overdue. We're eager to hear your thoughts on our social media about these signals, while the scientific community delves into the origins of these signals. Speculation abounds with theories of extraterrestrial origins, a mysterious force behind the phenomenon, space, agency, experts, strive for a measured approach. Yet no concrete evidence has surfaced regarding the nature of these signals. What's clear is that this is no ordinary event, leaving us all to ponder the identity or nature of the source. As debates and speculations intensified globally, Amanda Roberts, a distinguished astrophysicist, urged for caution during a public broadcast. Let's not rush to conclusions. She advised, emphasizing the plethora of natural phenomena capable of producing radio waves. The key lies within the signal. There are methods to analyze it, and rest assured they are being employed. However, current data remains elusive. A spokesperson for the Department of Interior, polished and composed, added, The global scientific community is unwavering in their determination to unravel this mystery. Teams worldwide are gathering information, and the cooperation among nations has been remarkable. We promise to share our findings once available. We also caution against misinformation. In these times, it's crucial to rely on official sources to avoid spreading unverified or harmful narratives. Our brightest minds are on this, committed to solving this cosmic puzzle together. As the broadcast concluded, the anchor thanked Dr. Roberts, emphasizing the station's commitment to balanced reporting amidst global curiosity. We're part of a comprehensive international investigation, the anchor stated, urging viewers to avoid jumping to conclusions. Public unrest grew, however, with accusations that the government was dragging its feet. As time passed, more details emerged about mission planning and international consultations behind closed doors. 
Yet, the public remained in the dark about any progress in deciphering the message, fueling further speculation and concern. In the wake of escalating speculation about alien signals, the team gathered in the conference room turned their attention to the television, anticipating a significant announcement from the president. As the room quieted, the news alert flashed across the screen, signaling the imminent address by the Inanna Territory Manager from the White House within Inverness Territory. With confidence and a sense of duty, the Inanna Territory Manager approached the podium. Today, I address you under extraordinary circumstances that have captivated our collective imagination and thirst for knowledge. He began, In light of these developments, I am invoking Presidential Act 12387A. With support from other territory managers, I have been appointed President of the people of Sunev. My primary responsibility is the safety and well-being of our planet and to keep you informed about matters of global importance. He continued, Recently, our world has been stirred by signals from beyond our planet, specifically from the moon Miranda of Uranus. Such curiosity is natural, yet it's vital to replace speculation with transparent investigation. Underlining the commitment to openness, the newly appointed president unveiled Operation Aphrodite, a global initiative aimed at comprehensively understanding the signals from Miranda. This operation signifies an unparalleled collaboration across SUNEV, bringing together experts from various fields. Our mission is clear, to analyze these signals and, in doing so, deepen our cosmic understanding. Addressing concerns about extraterrestrial contact, he emphasized caution and the absence of evidence pointing to such involvement. Operation Aphrodite involves an array of experts, from astrophysicists to biologists, each contributing their expertise to this monumental effort. This is more than a scientific endeavor. It's a testament to our unity and shared quest for knowledge. The President's message was one of optimism and collaboration. This journey may well redefine our place in the universe and underscores our innate drive to explore. Together, we embark on this historic mission, hopeful for what discoveries lie ahead and united in our pursuit of understanding. Kwai announced, I'm granting everyone six hours for personal matters. Be back here within 10 minutes after that time has elapsed. Silence is imperative. Use this interval to settle your affairs and return with a pillow and blanket. We're organizing a daycare in the auditorium. See me afterwards for your voucher. Accommodations were being prepared for the staff and visiting scientists. Teams from across the globe were anticipated to converge at the observatory, enhancing the collaborative effort. This is the end of this chapter. Here is a brief summary of chapter 2. A language with no voice. The story unfolds in a high-security conference room, where a man in black outlines the classified nature of the discussion, emphasizing the critical and secretive work ahead. Director Azalea takes the stage, presenting the tasks at hand, including signal decoding, data validation, and message analysis, underlining the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence behind the signals. The narrative then shifts to Joan, who discovers the cyclical nature of the transmissions, suggesting a deliberate communication attempt. This revelation leads to a tense, clandestine meeting where the message is decoded, revealing a peaceful greeting from the united intelligence of Miranda, seeking knowledge and understanding. As the story progresses, the narrative delves into the complexities of the situation, including the involvement of a secretive group with alien technology, the global political landscape reacting to the discovery, and the initiation of Operation Aphrodite to analyze the signals collaboratively. The President's announcement of a global initiative marks a turning point, emphasizing transparency and the quest for knowledge.